Missions was not something that I always wanted to do, that I had this passion and desire to be a part of. In fact, I can remember in high school, my Sunday school teacher asking us what we wanted to do with our lives. And as we went around the room, I think pretty much everyone in the room felt called into the ministry in some form, whether it was children or youth, music, evangelism, some form of ministry they felt called, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't feel called into the ministry, but I also had this feeling that I should, everyone else was, and I should too, but it wasn't what I wanted. And for me, missions was really the only thing that made sense ministry-wise for me to be a part of, but I didn't want that for my life. And so I prayed to God and I, I told him, I don't want to do missions. That's not what I want for my life. But at the same time, I want to be in your will and I want to be doing what you want for me. So my prayer kind of ended up, I don't want to do missions. Please don't call me into that, but I'll do whatever you want me to do as long as I have a passion for it. I want to be passionate. I want to love whatever it is that I do. And I continued praying that expecting to get this passion for missions and it really didn't come. My senior year of high school I realized that I love film, the writing, the production, the editing, the whole process of it and that was my passion. God had answered my prayer and given me a passion so I pursued that. I went to UAB and graduated in May 2010 and then I faced the question of now what? Where do I go from here? What's the next step? And grad school seemed to fit. It seemed to be the right step to take. So I found a school. I was went to check out the campus. I was looking for a job, studying for my GRE, making contacts, everything that I needed to do. And God just closed the door there. At the beginning of this year, I heard about the World Race and I was told to check it out. I asked a few people about it, but didn't really think that much about it. But there was this stirring towards missions that was beginning. And I really think a lot of it stemmed from kind of a dissatisfaction with where I was. I kept looking around and I was so blessed and I had all of my needs were met. And beyond that, I had so much more. I had a great family and job. All, everything just was so great and so much blessing, but it was like, what am I doing with it all? What, what impact am I making with all of this blessing? I got to May of this year, 2011. It had been a year since I graduated college and grad school, the, like I said, the door was closed there. So it's been a year and again I have all of these questions of what now, where do I go from here, what's my next step? And I was in town one day with this just amount of time to kill before I was meeting some friends and I end up pulling into this cemetery where my grandfather was buried. He had died nine years ago and I had not been to the cemetery since then and it's a very large cemetery so I pull in and I have no idea where to go. I don't know where he's buried. So I'm just kind of driving, I end up turning down this road and I continue driving and I finally just pull over where I am because I don't really know where to go and I'm frustrated. This thought comes to mind of just walk around and you know, I'm like, well, I, I don't know why I should do that. I don't know why I should walk around because I could look forever and never find his grave. But, and when I would look out my window, there was like this one vase that just caught my eye. And it wasn't real special, but my eye just kept going to it. And that thought again comes to just walk to the vase. And it still seems crazy because I don't even know if I'm in the right area of the cemetery. But I keep hearing that, like, just walk to the vase. So finally I'm like, okay, I'm going to walk to the vase. So I grab my jacket and I'm walking to the vase and I'm glancing down at the graves on e either side of me as I'm walking and I'm checking the name. And right before I get to that vase that I'm headed towards, I check the headstone of the grave right before it. And in all caps, it says Petri, really large. And that was my grandfather's grave. It had been nine years, and I walked straight to his grave. So now I'm sitting there at his grave, and I really don't know where to go from here. I don't know what to do, and I'm just kind of thinking. And I just hear in my spirit, 
legacy. And I'm like, okay, legacy. And I start to think about my life and what impact I'm making. It's been a year since I've graduated. What am I doing? What's my legacy? And just continuing to think about that. And I'm like, is there anything else, God, you know, like, can you give me? And that was, that was it. All I got was legacy. And so I left, I met my friends. And the next morning was Sunday. I was working in the back at the soundboard and during worship and, and listening and adjusting and doing everything, I very clearly hear in my spirit, Petri is the name and the legacy you walk in, own it. And this probably should have cleared a lot of stuff up for me, but it kind of posed even more questions. I really didn't know what my grandfather's legacy was. I knew he had been a ma uh, missionary. I knew he had been a pastor, but I didn't really know what his legacy and what his impact had been. A couple of months later, I'm at a youth service and I'm praying for the students that I was working with at the time. And world race came to mind and then Africa. And I remembered years ago, my grandmother telling me that her and my grandfather had this passion to go to Africa and do missions work there. And in an instant, I realized that that was what my grandfather's legacy was. It was a legacy of missions. It was a couple of months after that before I realized that world race was a step towards walking in that legacy. I ended up applying for the world race in October, had my interview and was officially accepted November 1st of this year. And it's been so amazing to talk to my grandmother more about my grandfather's story and my story and how they played together. And the vision that my grandfather had while a missionary in Belgium of going to Africa and preaching to a crowd of Africans. And he actually got to go to Africa and see that vision come to life. I also learned that when he died, his books were donated to a library and a Bible college in Tanzania. And what do you know, Tanzania is one of the countries on my route. It's amazing to look back and see how years and years ago, even when I was in high school, God just saw so much further than what I saw. I haven't always done everything right. I've made mistakes along the way, but I'm at a point where I know that I'm living my life on purpose and I'm living the best life ever. And it's incredible.